I come to you today with a word about uh, stewardship, about stewardship. I want to remind us that uh, there are many stories in Scripture uh, that help us to understand stewardship and stewardship at difficult times uh, and the work of giving and doing uh, good uh, together uh, as followers of God, as uh, Christians. And, and so I want to begin just to, to remind you of the image of Abraham and Sarah, Abram and Sarai, who leave uh, Ur of the Chaldeans who are sent by God into the wilderness. But what's important is that as they go, uh, they uh, stop, they give thanks, uh, they set up altars wherever they are, uh, and they make an offering to God uh, for two reasons. One, because they wish uh, to share with others, to be a blessing uh, for others, as God has invited them to be, a blessing of shalom, of peace for others, but also to offer thanks to God for God's presence, uh, for, for God's presence with them. Uh, so as they are a blessing to the world, they're also giving thanks to God for God's presence. And so I want to talk a little bit as we find ourselves in this particularly unique moment, a time of crisis, uh, a time in which we're dealing with a pandemic, a time in which we're also uh, dealing with economic impacts brought on uh, by a number of variables in our culture that we find ourselves in a very difficult place. And so what we know and what we want to say to you uh, as a church, as a pastors, as bishops and clergy, what we want to tell you is that it is so important for us to care for one another right now and for you to take care of your family, to take care of those needs that you may have, uh, to uh, provide uh, for yourself in a moment that may actually uh, feel very precarious. And so we want to encourage you to do that. We also want to encourage you to remember that we are doing this only for a short while. And it's incumbent upon us to also support those outside of our families and our lives who uh, are doing uh, ministry and work, who are pastorally caring for people, who are even now and in this moment uh, uh, being in contact with us, uh, who, are, who are handing out food, who are visiting the sick, who are caring for the dying. Uh, as well as the many other nonprofits who depend upon you, depend upon you and your uh, giving. So I want to encourage you to remember in this moment, yes, to do the work you need to do to provide for yourself. But as you think about how you might do good and bless the world, be mindful of your churches and ministries, uh, the outreach ministries, the service ministries, the not-for-profits in your town, in your city, in your neighborhoods that continue to do good work. And with those the, uh, gifts that are left over uh, to uh, make sure that you help support uh, our mutual ministry. We in the Diocese of Texas are doing that. We are working together with our endowments and foundations to begin to relieve some of the economic pressure for each one of our congregations. The diocese itself uh, has a huge economic footprint in terms of employees and people who work with us and serve with us. And, and of course, we don't want uh, them to go without. We want them to continue uh, to have the resources that they need to, to live on, even in this changing moment of the economy. We also, and more importantly, want to continue our ministry and service uh, with you. And while this seems like an unbearable amount of time, what we know is in a few short months, uh, maybe in a month's time, maybe in only a few weeks' time, uh, we will want our nonprofits in our local areas and our outreach ministries, our service ministries, and even our churches to be ready uh, to minister at that moment, not having lost uh, uh, our capacity to do so. So as your bishop, I want to encourage you to remember the story of Abraham, who surely took care of himself and his family and all of his companions as they walk through the wilderness, but also in that wilderness always stopped, uh, built an altar, gave thanks, offered sacrifices, uh, and continued to do so that he might, he and Sarah might be a blessing uh, uh, to uh, the world around them.
Uh, often when invited to give the offertory sentence, use uh, that passage from Hebrews about uh, the, uh, the fruit of lips uh, uh, that proclaim the gospel, uh, the doing of good work, and the sharing what we have uh, with others. That these are the sacrifices uh, that are pleasing to God. Each one of your congregations is even now working on online giving in ways in which you can join the community of Christians everywhere and continuing our ministry and our impact, our proclamation of the gospel. Uh, and each one of the communities across, especially our diocese across the 57 counties. So as your bishop, I encourage you to join with me, with Joanne and I, as we continue uh, to give uh, our pledge and our commitment as we look at ways in which we can now give more. Uh, and as uh, your clergy are doing the same, please join us in giving things to God for God's presence uh, and help us continue as churches of the Diocese of Texas, as institutions who minister to the poorest of the poor across the diocese, especially an institution like El Buen or St. Vincent's House, help us to continue uh, God's ministry in Texas. Thank you.